Okay, so in the last chapter, I talked about the t-test and f-test to test hypotheses about different coefficient values. And in most of the cases, it will be enough to use the t-test and the f-test. But sometimes it is useful to have other ways to test multiple exclusion restrictions. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a different test. It is called Lagrange Multiplier Test for Q Exclusion Restrictions. And we are going to assume that the last Q of these variables have zero population parameters. So this will be our null hypothesis. To obtain this LM test, step one is to regress Y variable on the restricted set of independent variables. So here we are going to estimate only our restricted model and get residuals from this model. In step two, we are going to regress the residuals that we will get from step one on all of the independent variables. And then we are going to save our R squared from this model as R squared unrestricted. And step three is we are going to compute LM test value using this formula, which is the number of observations times the R squared that we will get from step number two. And finally, we are going to compare this LM value with the appropriate critical value that we will get from a chi-square distribution with Q restrictions on the model. And as with the t-test and the f-test, the procedure of rejecting our null hypothesis is identical. That is, if our calculated LM value from here, step 3, is greater than the critical value, we are going to reject our null hypothesis that these variables have no impact on Y. Otherwise, we fail to reject our null hypothesis. And it, it is always better to get the p-values. And these p-values will tell us about the probability that this variable will exceed the value of the test statistic. Okay, so here's an example of uh, applying LM test to test for multiple linear restrictions. And this model is the model of crime that we discussed earlier. And here we are going to test whether average sentence and the total time spent in prison have no impact on the number of arrests. So step one, I'm going to regress my restricted model without these two variables. And then step two, I'm going to calculate the residuals from this model. And then I'm going to regress these residuals on the full set of variables. And note here that we are including all the variables in the model here, not only the variables from the restricted model, but full model. And then I'm going to extract R squared and save it as R squared. And then I'm going to calculate my LM test. Formula is R squared from this model multiplied by the number of observations in the data set. Our LM value is 4.07. Now we have to see whether this value is greater than or less than our critical value. So to calculate our critical value, we are going to use the chi-square distribution with two restrictions on the model because Q, that is the number of restrictions on this model, is two because we are imposing two restrictions that these two variables are equal to zero. And I'm going to test this hypothesis at 10% level of significance. So my critical value is 4.60. So our calculated value 4.07, it is less than the critical value. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis that both these variables, average sentence and the total time, they are equal to zero at 10%. As I said earlier, it is always better to obtain p-values at which this hypothesis will be rejected. So let's get that p-value. So we can get this p-value using this function p chi squared and then I'm gonna use these two arguments. lm is the test and 2 is the number of restrictions and we can get this p-value as 0.13. So this hypothesis is rejected at 13%. So we already know that we failed to reject this hypothesis at 10% but it is better to know at what level this hypothesis will be rejected, which in this case will be rejected at 13%. Okay, so as an alternative test, we can use the F-test to test for the same restrictions and the value of F-test is 
2.03 and the p-value is again 0.13 or 13 percent so even the f-test will give us a p-value of 13 percent that is we will reject the null hypothesis that both of these variables are jointly statistically significant at 13 percent so f-test and lm-test are giving us identical results in this case also it is important that in step one we regress y only on the restricted independent variables and get the residuals from this restricted model if we mistakenly use all these variables in the model in step one and obtain the residuals from the unrestricted regression in step two we will get an r squared value which will be exactly equal to zero so i will recommend that you go ahead and experiment with this so that's how you calculate the LM test to test for multiple linear restrictions on a model. Alright, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.